Hello and welcome to a brand new read aloud series. With this new novel, we are going to one of the most legendary authors of all time, Roald Dahl. Uh, you probably are very familiar with many of his books, James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the BFG, so many books to choose from. We're going to go with one of my personal favorites from Roald Dahl, his classic, The Witches. Now, for those of you that maybe are like, oh, I've seen that movie before. There have been a couple of versions made throughout the years. Both of them, though, while excellent in their own right, definitely depart from the core story that Roald Dahl originally wrote in his novel. So those of you that think you might know which way the story is going to go, obviously it's going to be very similar. But it won't be identical to what you might be expecting. So we're just going to jump right in with just the introductory piece in part one. Uh, just another great example of a hook. And not just a great introduction, but also one that builds in a nice little cliffhanger that will lead us into part two. So let's begin. Roll Dolls, The Witches. In fairy tales, witches always wear silly black hats and black cloaks, and they ride on broomsticks. But this is not a fairy tale. This is about real witches. The most important thing you should know about real witches is this. Now listen very carefully and never forget what comes next. Real witches dress in ordinary clothes and look very much like ordinary women. They live in ordinary houses and they work in ordinary jobs. That is why they're so hard to catch. A real witch hates children with a red-hot, sizzling hatred that is more sizzling and red-hot than any hatred you could possibly imagine. A real witch spends all her time plotting to get rid of the children in her particular territory. Her passion is to do away with them, one by one. It is all she thinks about the whole day long. Even if she's working as a cashier in a supermarket, or typing letters in an office, or driving around in a fancy car, and she could be doing any of these things. Her mind will always be plotting and scheming and churning and burning and whizzing and fizzing with murderous bloodthirsty thoughts. Which child, she says to herself all day long, exactly which child shall I choose for my next squelching? A real witch gets the same pleasure from squelching a child as you might get from eating a plateful of strawberries and cream. She reckons on doing away with one child a week. Anything less than that and she becomes grumpy. One child a week is fifty to a year. Squish them and squiggle them and make them disappear. That is the motto of all witches. Very carefully a victim is chosen. Then the witch stalks the wretched child like a hunter stalking a little bird in the forest. She treads softly. She moves quietly. She gets closer and closer. Then at last, when everything is ready, whoosh, she swoops. Sparks fly, flames leap, oil boils, rats howl, skin shrivels, and the child disappears. A witch, you must understand, does not knock children on the head or stick knives into them or shoot at them with a pistol. People who do those things get caught by the police. A witch never gets caught. Don't forget she has magic in her fingers and devilry dancing in her blood. She can make stones jump about like frogs. She can make tongues of flame go flickering across the surface of the water. These magic powers are very frightening. Luckily, there are not a great number of real witches in the world today, but there are still quite enough to make you nervous. In England, there are probably about 100 of them altogether. Some countries have more, others have not quite so many. No country in the world is completely free from witches. A witch is always a woman. Now, I, I do not wish to speak badly about women. Most women are lovely. But the fact remains that all witches are women. There is no such thing as a male witch. On the other hand, a ghoul is always a male, so indeed is a bar guest. Both are dangerous, but neither of them is half as dangerous as a real witch. As far as children are concerned, a real witch is easily the most dangerous of all the living creatures on earth. What makes her look doubly dangerous is the fact that she doesn't look dangerous. Even when you know all the secrets, and you will hear about those later, you can still never be quite sure whether it is a witch you are gazing at or just a kind lady. If a tiger were able to make himself look like a large dog with a waggy tail, you would probably go up and pat him on the head. And that would be the end of you. It's the same with witches. They all look like nice ladies. Kindly examine the picture on the opposite page, and we'll show you that here. 
Which lady is the witch? That's a difficult question, but it is one that every child must try to answer. For all you know, a witch might be living next door to you right now. She might be the woman with the bright eyes who sat opposite you on the bus. She might be a lady with a dazzling smile who offered you a sweet from a paper bag in the street before lunch one day. She might even. And this might make you jump. She might even be one of the lovely school teachers in your school this very moment. Look carefully at those teachers. Maybe they smile at the absurdity of such a suggestion. Don't let that put you off. It could be hard, part of her cleverness. Now, I'm not, of course, telling you for one second that your teacher is actually a witch. All I'm saying is she might be one. It is most unlikely, but it is not impossible. Oh, if only there were a way of telling for sure whether a woman was a witch or not, we could round them all up, put them in a meat grinder. Unhappily, there is no such way. But there are a number of little signals you can look out for. Little quirky habits that all witches have in common. And if you know about these, and you remember them always, then you might just possibly manage to escape from being squelched before you're very much older. I myself had two separate encounters with witches before I was eight years old. From the first, I escaped unharmed. But on the second occasion, I was not so lucky. Things happen to me that will probably make you scream when you read about them, but that can't be helped. The truth must be told. The fact that I am still here and able to speak to you at all, however peculiar I may look, is due entirely to my wonderful grandmother. And we'll stop there. Like I said at the beginning, this is just going to be a brief introductory piece to this book. And again, just a great example of a hook. In any piece of writing, you want something that just really gets the reader or the audience's attention. And much like some of our other read aloud books, if you go back to something like The Graduation of Jake Moon or The Homework Machine, those are two other books that have really excellent hooks where in just a few pages, they really grab your attention and just draw you right into the rest of the book, making you want to read more or hear more. And with this one, we've got a very interesting hook because our narrator, who, by the way, is never actually named throughout the book. It's told from a first-person perspective with the narrator being one of our protagonists, but we never actually find out that person's name. But the narrator almost gives us a little bit of a spoiler for some events that will happen later. We know he has two encounters with witches, and the first time he encounters a witch, you don't need to be concerned at all because he flat out tells us he escapes unharmed. But the second time he encounters a witch, we know he won't be so lucky. Now what happens? You'll have to come back for future parts to find that out.